Welcome to Ling Time Chat, episode 24. Sure. <laughs> This, uh, I'm, I'm this, episode, so sure. this episode will be dedicated to Jack Power, keeping us safe one day a year, every so often. Every, every once in a while. Yeah. But I mean, really, in a show, well, sorry, no, I shouldn't say in a show like that, if that were real world, mm -hmm. like, that feels more realistic that it only happens like in a one day crisis mode, but every so often rather than like, every single day is crisis mode so like it feels like that would track yeah you know? i mean it does feel like eight of those hours would probably be crisis and the rest of them would there would be a lot of downtime but you know um fair by the way i never saw it i haven't either really i just i know the concept i would have uh, i mean I, I i know the concept as well but i just would have guessed if there was one thing that you would have seen with your life experience it was that <laughs> life experience like, I don't even know <laughs> what you could be thinking of or referring to to think that. I thought you would have listed know. it on your resume. What, that I watched 24? Yep. No, I not I only don't out. list those things on resumes, but like I, I have not. So. Angie, get the popcorn. That's you, right? That, no. <laughs> Plus, I'm pretty sure that by the time it came out, I wasn't living at home anymore. So I wouldn't be telling my sister to get the popcorn. Yeah, I assume she would, you know, fly in every every, every time, week in every order time. to watch it with you. It's 24 day. You're an interesting person. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so also interesting is, and yeah. I didn't realize um, how, how loud it would feel to my ears uh, okay. because we're sitting right in front of the guitars and like uh -huh. I can hear the reverberations from my voice in the instruments. <laughs> and that's a very interesting <laughs> phenomenon. <laughs> okay, well, David's doing something weird, but um, can you hear that? Yeah, a little bit. A little, yeah, a little bit. And so if you hear like some sonorants <laughs> behind us, um, it's the instruments providing a, a sort of uh, a deep sound for us. We could put some stuffed animals in the holes of the acoustic guitars that can poke their little heads out. That would actually be really cute. Mm -hmm. like, but then they would probably get stuck. And then if you ever wanted to play, we'd have to figure out how to get them. Mm -hmm. That would be a thing. Scissors. Okay. <laughs> It'd be your stuffed animals we're cutting up, not mine. Uh, strings. I don't know what you were thinking about. <laughs> All right. So um, today, oh, I yes. am in charge of the topic. Excellent. And David is running away. Yeah, I just forgot one thing. I just forgot one thing. I had to realize. Sorry. I'll, I am right super curious about what he forgot, but um, I was inspired by something that the patrons had been discussing that would be a cool idea. And so I thought, why not make that um, make that idea a reality? Um, and so we're going to try this out. Um, oh, I see what David got. Him. Yeah. Are you going to show it on screen before I continue with what the unveiling is or? Oh yeah, here it okay. is. This is what we're talking about this week. Now remember it's Jesse's a podcast. Cupcakes. There we go. <laughs> it was like, remember, you got to say what it is. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Okay. These are my birthday cupcakes. Or one they were of, one of your one birthday, of my cupcakes. birthday cupcakes. When you have multiple birthday celebrations, you get multiple desserts. So keep that in mind. Mm. Um, so um, people have been saying like it would be fun to have like some proto forms mm -hmm. that then David and I each individually worked on and came back together to figure out what we would do Ooh. differently. And so I thought like, that's a really cool idea. And so this is going to be um, at least a two-part podcast. Hmm. Part one today, we're going to decide on a proto form and talk about uh, decisions that we're making uh, for those proto forms. Um, and we're going to have like a document that we will then each get. And we can even share that as a resource on Patreon so that mm -hmm. anybody at home who wants to play along has a month to figure out what they would do to this proto form. Ooh. And then we're going to come back together um, next month's podcast and compare 
compare what we did, see, see how different the languages look after David gets to do what he wants and after I get to do what I want on my forms and then we're gonna compare and oh, okay. we're gonna talk. So you're talking about like a little proto system. Yeah. Because you said proto form, so I was assuming this is one word and I was like, this is gonna be a very short podcast. No, proto system, we're gonna come up with some forms okay, for okay, the system. Okay, okay. Do you mm -hmm. wanna show now the, see the, the cupcake has a surprise inside and this is why David was excited about them. It's a cookie. So there's actually, they're chocolate cupcakes. And then inside the chocolate cupcake, is there's actually a chocolate chip cookie baked into its center. And mm. so mm. <laughs> and so it's kind of exciting when you bite in and find out that there's also a cookie. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Of course, at home, we're going to, for all the people who are listening right now and, you know, I haven't seen the video yet. Uh, we're going to talk through everything we're doing in the document. Um, but for anybody who is watching on YouTube, when this comes out, you can see. Oh. So I've actually made, so I'm calling it Langtime Chat Proto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is going to be our sketch. I should totally change the order of our names. I'll take care of that before I share the document because this is me. We got to switch it up every single time. <laughs> Um, and so this is the regular sketch document that we work from. It's just going to be a sketch. It's not going to be like in no way, shape or form are we going to be <laughs> creating a whole language. Mm -hmm. um, but what we're going to do today is definitely settle on um, the sounds of the proto forms uh, or sorry, the proto sketch, I should say. Uh, so we'll get sounds and then we're going to come up with, I don't know, like a set, maybe like 10 roots or something and talk about, you know, like what routes we're going to pick and what, what they're going to look like in the proto system. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also going to decide, because really what I want to do is for us to be able to come back and not only have these like um, roots transformed, but then also like make some basic decisions like, oh, the proto language is, you know, SVO or SOV or whatever. So that mm -hmm. way we can like kind of play around and put like one sentence together and like a very simple basic sentence, nothing like the man kicked the rock or something, you know, like something super, super basic. Wow. So we're going to have to deal with verbs then. Yes. Mm. All right. All right. But it, it, you can decide that, you know, you can decide how you want to deal with them. And we're not going to do multiple sentences, no embedded clauses, no nothing. It's just going to be like, how does this work for this one verb form? And that's it. You no, know, I do. I do conlanging for my job. I don't want to have to do it for my leisure time. <laughs> it's just drudgery. Drudgery. Yeah. You are so full of it. You know what I enjoy? You know what I enjoy? If I'm just relaxing, I like filling out forms. Why can't we just do a podcast about filling out forms? That sounds like fun. I mean, that is what you were doing for the last 45 minutes oh, for a short survey. But that... it was for your benefit, patrons. <laughs> oh, well. you, why do you keep running away while we're supposed to be recording a podcast? All right. So um, I've got the phonology, the phonology section pulled up on the screen. Okay. For those listening at home. Okay. So you're looking at again so, the chart that you're used to seeing. But we're gonna we're gonna change it. We're gonna change it because it's not it's not phonology, it's phonology. Oh F U N. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um that one goes out to all our punners. <laughs> <laughs> Little punology for mm. and so. One thing that I'm sure that you all have noticed, you know, as you've seen our episodes is that when we start, the consonant chart is never a like full IPA consonant chart. And so um, that's just like the first thing I wanted to point out. And so David, like, you know, condensed the IPA chart uh, to be much smaller than the, the full one. Deleting out, for instance, there's no pharyngeal column yeah there's no uh you know so it's like there are certain columns uh missing and um several rows as well like trills and whatnot um why did you do that i never separate those out are you kidding me trills versus taps versus glides it's just silly uh, versus laterals and all this you don't need that 
They're just they're just approximants. I mean, you just want to you just want something simple. Um, otherwise, you're going to be stuck with a million different rows. It's basically you could end up with something where every single segment has its own box, which is like if you do that, why? Okay. Then just so write then a list. Let's talk about the columns, the placement of articulations that were deleted. Oh, these are just the usual suspects. So it's like you could because you can always delete and add more. Sure. Um, it's like usually one of dental or alveolar is probably going to get deleted. Mm -hmm. um, usually uvular gets deleted. Uh, and it's like if I really want to add pharyngeal, uh, which I have um, in um, what do I do pharyngeal, uh, probably the Warcraft Orcish uh, and then um, definitely in Dominion with the... Um, whatever language that was. It had a dumb name, it started with an L. Oh, I don't remember the language name for that. Lee Shepis, terrible. <laughs> and so, so you start with the usual suspects in terms of like yeah. what you tend to find um, in languages in general, like the sounds that just are more common and placement of articulation that are that's more common and yeah. frequent. But it doesn't mean like you can't add to it. And same thing with the vowels. Uh, high, mid, low is easy, but sometimes the distinction between, you know, um, open, mid and close, mid is important. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it isn't. And so if it is, you can just add a row. It's no big deal. You delete the central uh, column, which, you know, <laughs> you probably want to do. David it does the all point. the time. Um, <laughs> and, the, and like another thing is, um, for instance, under the palatal column, the fricatives that are listed are technically post-alveolar because they're oh, the yeah. esh and the esh, but a language is highly unlikely to have both the esh and then the, the uh, palatal fricative that's represented with the C with the little yeah. hat. hat uh, uh, what is that little hangy downy thingy? Sedia. Sedia. Thank you. Um, it, you know, it's unlikely that it would have both sh and <laughs> like they're, yeah. they're like barely different. You know, who does have it is uh, Hungarian. Oh, so if, if you're yeah. doing something Hungarian but style, I guess. But there's borrowings. And that, yeah, that yeah. would affect that. Um, but anyway, there are just some, some things here. I know having worked with a lot of, um, you know, students and beginning conlingers, I know one area that is difficult is that a lot of students want to put in way too many consonant sounds, mm. um, sometimes too many vowel sounds too, but it's like they get so intrigued by these sounds um, as they're exploring, you know, sounds of languages around the world. And then they're like, oh my gosh, I love all of these sounds. And so I'm going to put in this whole like system to the point where the, the consonant inventory gets um, really large. Yeah, I mean, uh, you brought it up. I didn't, so that means I get to weigh in on this, yeah? So am I gonna allow you to speak in our shared podcast? Are you? I guess so. It looks like our special guest is here. <laughs> oh, gosh. What do you think? It's probably uh, just a package. I'm, right? I'm guessing it's yeah. a package, but I also wanna check. Do you wanna weigh in while I check to make sure that is just a package? All right. So. I cannot tell you how many conlangs I see where all I do is I just look at their, honestly, not even their phonology, their phonetic inventory. And I can say, well, this is, this is a pass, basically. I'm swiping left on this. That's the correct direction, right? You swipe left on something that you don't want. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I remember it from a, 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 an anti-smoking ad. I believe that swiping left is uh, means you don't want that. But yeah, I swipe left on a lot of conlings when I just look at their phonetic inventory um, because it, it's always troubling when there are more consonants than there are in the IPA chart, which um, which is something that you do see. Because it's like, well, let's start with the labials. And so we have P and B, but then we also have aspirated P and B. And then we also have labialized P and B. And then we also have aspirated labialized P and B. Um, and then also uh, palatalized plus aspira aspirated. And it's just, it's like just in the labials, you're getting like, you know, eight to 12 different stops, oral stops. And these are supposed to be separate phonemes. And we haven't even gotten to the lingual labials, which are obviously there as well. 
and then the dentals and the apicals and the alveolar. And it's just, it's just, I want to, I want to look at the phonemes that weren't included <laughs> and want to know what they did to not be invited to this party <laughs> to that everybody was invited to. Um, and I will say like, along with that, I think um, one thing that people see are the close transcriptions, um, you know, with all the, the diacritics and everything mm -hmm. and forget that, you know, yeah, if you do a close transcription of English, you're going to end up using a lot of those diacritics, oh, yeah. um, but they aren't their own phonemes and they don't, you know, like the, for instance, aspirated P is not distinguished from unaspirated P. It is in some languages. I'm not saying it can't be, um, but like you can, you can build in a lot of those sounds that you want by having different phonological processes and just being like, well, they would pronounce it this way on the surface, but like that doesn't mean they need to have their own entries hmm. in the chart. So I have turned off notifications and I'm still getting notifications <laughs> and like, I don't understand what's this happening. Is just, this is a winner. This is a winner um, right now. Podcast is. <laughs> doorbells, email <laughs> notifications. I'm so sorry, everyone. Yeah. Um, but all that is to say, um, I, as a beginning guideline, um, just for, um, students, I, I encourage them to, to aim for some like average numbers. And in general, I think the average consonant inventory uh, for languages is like 22 to 26 consonants altogether, like all together. I want to say that's the average. I think it was 18 to 22. 18 to 22. Is that? Yeah. So it's somewhere around that 20 range. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's like, yeah, you can go up to that. But as soon as you start getting bigger, I always encourage people to say, why? Why are you doing this? Why are you having more? Um, and if you have a solid justification, then that's one thing. But if it's just, I like all these sounds, um, you know, as a conlanger, that can be your justification. But on the other hand, one danger of that is that there are just going to be sounds that never get used. Yeah, because you're going to forget they exist because you have so many to choose from. <laughs> I have to tell you, I really wish I could meet the linguist who championed the inclusion of the uh, labiodental nasal, you know, glyph, right? Which is the M with the tail on it that you see on the velar nasal, because they had no idea. They had no idea what was going to happen because of that. How many conlings were going to say, okay, well, here's the labial nasal phoneme, here's the alveolar nasal phoneme, and here's the labiodental nasal phoneme. And so here, this difference would be ma, ma, na. Yep. And it's like, yeah. Um, so if you heard that difference, good for you. One um, stupid language does it. You know which one? It's, it's ewe, this language that has voice and stupid. it's okay yes no it's a cool language it's but very cool it's a cool language but it, this one uh, distinguishes uh bilabial voiceless and voiced um fricatives and labiodental voiced and voiceless fricatives so oh, va, nice. va, 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 and it also has ma and ma wow. yeah uh, gotta gotta train your ears for that one mm. um okay okay so yeah. all that is to say that was a bit of opening advice um, because that is one of the, um, I think it's one of the bigger areas that tends to show up in chats about like, hey, I need feedback. Um, and that's, so I just wanted to kind of like lay mm. out some beginning advice. Same goes for the bowel system mm. because they are often very, very heavy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so like being able to go lighter and really, I mean, yeah, you can have larger systems and there are reasons to have larger but I definitely encourage um, my students, especially as they're starting out, just do a straight up five vowel system because you can get a lot of mileage out of those five vowels in, in protoforms. Um, and yeah. you can do a lot of cool things with them coming together in contact and whatnot. I, I would encourage all conlangers to do this at least once. Um, I think that if you just, you know, I don't know, throw a fish in a pond, is this the way you say this? Um, no, if you're, okay, if you're throwing a fish into a pond with other fish, and then you're going to hit one fish, and then there's like two types of fish, right? <laughs> the fish that you throw is likely going to hit a heavy morphology language fish. 
<laughs> as opposed to the opposite type of fish. <laughs> okay, I is... <laughs> am so lost on anything as I'm trying to imagine why you would throw a fish into a pond in the first place and why, I, what? I told you about Cleo, right? What fish? Cleo, my my goldfish that got so big that it used to jump out of the bowl and you, they used to, we used to come into the room and Cleo would be flopping around on the floor. And, and we decided, well, we think that Cleo does not want to be here in this bowl anymore. And so we released Cleo and into did, the ocean. Did oh, uh, I feel like Cleo may have died. Oh, Cleo swam straight away. Cleo was very happy. We 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 done we dropped Cleo in the um in the the little river at the Port Sakal village. Um and, and let me tell you, I saw Cleo. Cleo dove into the water and swam away. Good for Cleo. Yeah. Okay. But, so so that's like, you know, when you throw a fish in you, the ocean. Uh, sure, but, sure. But, but can we back up any fish? Can you back up and tell me what it is you encourage conlingers to do besides throwing fish? Because I don't know what the fish actually represented. Okay. Well there's a like there's like a slide, you know, uh, and, and you know all, all conlingers know this in terms of um the, the reification of morphology, mm -hmm. right? And it's like on one end of the slide, you have a completely isolational language. So it means you need a whole lot of compounds and also extra words, auxiliaries and things like that, you know, like Mandarin. Um, and then on the other side, there's, you know, uh, ineptitude, huge words, everything gets built up together. I can't believe you didn't say there's Wokuthiji. <laughs> oh, Wokuthiji, that's right. We're aiming there. But, and then of course there's lots of stuff in between. And um, it seems like uh, the average conlanger is much more interested in the, you know, the Swahili uh, range of, um, of uh, what's its languages. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you'll see a lot of conlangers producing, you know, Swahili like languages. I'm not like it's exactly like that language, but you know, highly agglutinating on the Swahili Turkish spectrum. Um, I would, I would encourage you to just once try to do something that is closer to Mandarin or something like Hawaiian, um, especially if you're looking at that saying, well, it's like, well, if you did that, then there's nothing to create. And it's like, no, 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 then you definitely need to do it because there is just because you don't have a million vowel, uh, verb forms or there's no like, you know, affixes doesn't mean that you're not creating stuff. Um, and so I think both phonologically and morphologically, it would be, a, it's a good exercise for conlangers to go that route and to try it. Um, and just to see how creative you can be and every little interesting thing that you can do with those types of languages. Um, you know, like amongst my early languages, right, there was, you know, Meg Davy, which is a disaster, which did, of course, have a labiodental nasal phoneme as it should of course mm -hmm. it also had a regular english r and also a tap and also a trill as everyone needs uh-huh uh-huh you start to see this all right and then um but then like i also did like a language that was clearly inspired by turkish and had you know all these noun cases and all these things that you did with the verbs but um but then, of course, one of my early languages was Kamakawi, where it was just really, I just loved the sound of Hawaiian, and I wanted to get something like that. But, um, but it was a good exercise, because, uh, it, because of what I was trying to do, I was aiming well away from, you know, a ton of morphology. And, you know, it makes you rethink how you do things. And I discovered, you know, this is a lot of fun, and there's a lot that you do. Um, both with word order and compounding and, you know, figuring out how these phrases work as opposed to just saying, well, here are a bunch of verb forms. So now I don't have to worry about the phrases. You can just change the verb form. It's a good exercise. And I really encourage conlangers to, to tackle it at least once. I would also encourage um, at least, well, at least once, make all these languages, but at least once try to start with a three vowel system. Yep. Um, because same thing, it's like, you may be surprised at the um, diversity that you can have from, um, especially uh, if it's the proto system that has three vowels, um, because from there things can get expanded or shifted. Um, but I, cause I have a lot, I know a lot of students are like, oh, every word's going to sound the same if I only have this many vowels. And it's like, no, actually you can get a lot of, um, a lot of different forms, um, from just a, a handful of sounds. 
Um, and by the way, we were both wrong. I looked it up while you were chatting about mm -hmm. it. Uh, the average consonant inventory is 19 to 25. Oh, okay. So 22 is like right there in that sweet spot. And then it's plus or minus three is the, the, the range for what's considered average. Got it. Um, so that is the, the range there. Um, okay. So that's been a lot of chit chat. Um, we need to decide what the proto system will have yeah. and um, delete out the sounds we, we don't want in the proto system. And of course, today we're not going to talk sound changes because that's going to be for each of us to talk about individual, talk about individually, decide individually to mm -hmm. discuss in our next episode. Yeah. Um, so I will let you go first okay, so about what you want to um, either champion and say we have to have this or delete. Okay. So obviously we need both a voiced and voiceless labiodental nasal. Um, so we're going to add that <laughs> column. <clears throat> no, no, but also, um, no. this is, as this is going back to an earlier point. If you've seen the, um, the consonant chart that we start with, you'll notice that I just have a, a, a category called labial. Um, and I include both bilabials and labiodentals in there. And that's because usually you don't need a distinction. Um, but if you do, again, you can always separate it out. Um, but, um, I will say this, when it comes to uh, consonants especially, um, there is, a, there is a, a propensity amongst conlangers, and I will say that's not a bad one, that you want to be able to you know, pronounce your language, right? And so you tend to steer clear of sounds that you have more trouble with. Um, but really, if you're going to do a proto-language and evolve it, this is not the place for it, because you can put all kinds of crazy things in the proto language that you cannot pronounce with the understanding that, you know, with sound changes, you're just going to get rid of them. Um, but in getting rid of them, it will often produce uh, interesting results. And so this is essentially like um, what everybody attributes to, to Chekhov, which is if you're going to put, uh, I think, I don't know if he said a cannon or a gun, but he says, if you're going to put that on stage in act one, you'd better fire it by, by the time act two is over with. Um, so this is where you got to, you kind of get to set things up. It's like, all right, well, I don't want a uvular series in my language, but if I drop a uvular series in, in the proto form, there are interesting things that you can do with it that are going to produce interesting, bizarre results in the modern language that you wouldn't be able to predict otherwise. Um, then this is example, for example, this is kind of like our letter C. Mm -hmm. um, in the various languages that have a letter C, it's always a little bit funky. It's like sometimes it's a K, sometimes it's a, a S, uh, sometimes it's sh, sometimes it's uh, um, And it's because, you know, back in Latin, it was just a K. But sound change stuff happened to it. And so then it got this variable pronunciation. Anyway, so, um, so that's why when designing a proto uh, consonant system, um, you don't need to shy away from stuff that you can't pronounce. So with that being said, yeah. what are you going to include? Okay, so some of my favorite things to include at the proto stage, uh, uvulars, of course, but also um, uh, an aspiration distinction in there, both with voice and voiced and voiceless. Um, and then um, implosives. Um, I like to include those uh, with the, you know, with the definite intention of destroying them um, <clears throat> because they do funny things. Um, I would like to get rid of one of these columns, dental or alveolar. And obviously in getting rid of, alveolar you would then maybe have dental stops is that what you would hopefully be suggesting yes um i i say get rid of dental okay oh i have to use two fingers on this even though you can just make that little button i right don't point. you know what it's my computer it's my choice yeah i can just go into the system preferences <laughs> and change it right now uh, just like your you know, natural a, a, scroll stops I, I don't do anything with your computer changey things. Okay. <laughs> um, so we got rid of the dental column, yeah. which in the way that the document is set up, that just means we got rid of theta and ed for the moment. Yeah. Um, 
And I'm going to say we're only going to start with two nasals, M and N. That's, that sounds reasonable. Um, so we can get rid of that. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, we, it's not like this language is intended to be anything or it has any, you know, breath in it at this point, but I was, I'm feeling H E. you know? Like keep the H? Yeah. I want to keep both glottals, glottal stop and the H. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, cause you had mentioned a lot of things that you'd, you'd like to keep. Yeah. And that was just for the sake of the podcast, not necessarily right. for this and, language. And I do want to point out, cause it's like, wow, if you kept all of those, that would be one hell of a consonant system. And mm -hmm. so really it would be like, oh, do I want implosives? Or do I want, you know, the aspirated series or do I want, you know, like usually mm -hmm. there's like an or sort of situation, yeah. not I want them all right um, for this. If we're keeping glottal at some point, I mean, in the proto system, we can have both velar and uvular, and then that'll be interesting to see what we choose to do with it, mm -hmm. because with having all of those back sounds, I would Im I'm not going to say what you should or should not do in sound changes, but I would imagine at some point, some of those sounds would start to be conflated. Mm -hmm. um, so that could be kind of fun to keep a uvular column for the protoforms. Okay, so let's keep that column for the time being before we start pruning the actual segments. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about these two real quick. Um, Which he's highlighted W and J, so the what and ya. Yeah, so the actual phonemes, actual what and ya. Uh, uh, both one or none? Um, <laughs> there's so many, like, as you're asking this, I'm like already coming up with ideas yeah. um, for where I want to go from here. And we haven't even gotten to mouse yet and everything. Um, I honestly would say let's um, get rid of the wa, keep the ya. Okay. I was going to say get rid of them both, but then I was like, no, no, I'm feeling yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, what do we think about the rest of the palatal series? Um, do you want a true palatal series? Do you want to just get rid of it and just keep yeah? I kind of want to just have yeah. Okay. So, I mean, already uh, this is, for me, it's heading in a definite, like it's he it's heading towards a definite end point. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I also want to take out the Africans. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we, the, we had uh, Cha and Zha. Uh, okay. Uh, and we already got rid of the palatal <clears throat> affricates, Cha and Zha. So protoforms do not have affricates. Yeah. Um, all right. So now our stop series, uh, we've got the P, B, T, D, K, G, Q, capital G, and glottal stop. Can you pronounce those? Well, I mean, I not well, but I can. All right. So like you would have on the one hand velar ka, but then uvular ka, and then yeah. glottal a. Ah. Okay, what about the voiced ones? Okay, have velar, I have to start with velar. I gotta go, yeah. gotta work my way back. Ga, ga, mm -hmm. and, and then of course there's no voiced glottal. <laughs> unless, and so- <laughs> Unless you read the tundra in its literature. And so, um, like right now, that is our system. Are we happy with all those stops or? Well, let me, um, let me share this bit uh, from uh, phonetics. Uh, so cross-linguistically, you'll see that uh, B is more common than P, K is more common than G, um, and then even money in between that. Um, and there is a reason for that. And also like if there's barely any statistics on this, but you know, claw versus claw, yeah, claw is way overrepresented. Claw is very rare. Um, but the reason for this is it has to do with the way that voicing uh, works. So uh, in order for a voiced stop to be carried off successfully, right, um, you have to have the actual stop closure, and then you have to start vibrating the vocal folds so that there's kind of a more or less simultaneous release of the stop with the vocal folds vibrating. Um, and in order to do that, like there's, and why you see a lot of like nasal stop clusters is because um, the easiest way to do it is to start vibrating them early. And if you do that, you end up with a nasal because essentially everything is closed um, in your mouth, 
but your vocal folds are vibrating. That has to come out somewhere. And so it comes out the only holes that are available, your nose, right? So, okay. And the other thing is that if you don't do that, go ahead and try this on your own. Try to do a voiced B and really a B and hold it without releasing it through your nose. Yeah. Okay. So you see what happens is like, there's nowhere for the air to escape, right? And in order for voicing to happen, air has to pass from your lungs over the vocal folds to vibrate them. But if it has nowhere to escape, it's just filling up inside of your mouth, right? Um, and inside of your, your nasal cavity for like, not your nasal, nasal cavity with the vela raised, there's no place for it to go. So you can only do it for so long. And this is a theory, by the way, why you see fewer um, geminate uh, voiced stops. Oh. Because the voicing necessarily has to occur for a little bit longer and it's just hard to do. Um, anyway, so the, the, the idea is that the closure uh, at the lips, it's easier to do voicing because there's a longer you know, tube there and kind of maintain it. Um, it's actually easier to do a B than a P. Whereas at the velum, the opposite is true. Ka is much easier than ga. And so if, uh, if a language is only going to have one of each, you expect it to have B and you expect it to have K. And the same with the uh, Q and the, and the uvular one. Um, and again, doesn't mean it's impossible. It's just this is uh, a reason why human languages do this type of thing. Um, and it's also why sometimes if I'm creating, you know, systems, I will do, you know, B, T, D, K, um, as opposed to like the opposite, right? Uh, and so that's like the first place I want to look at right now. Do we want to cut some consonants or do we want to say going back, there was a distinction? Because of course it's possible. It's always possible to make a distinction. So what what's interesting is I was leaning a different way because mm -hmm. knowing, um, that like the series PTK yeah. is, is quite a common one um, where you have only voiceless and you don't have any voicing distinction on stops. Could do that too. Yeah. Um, uh, so I was thinking about getting rid of the voiced consonants, but then was going to raise, do we want an unaspirated versus aspirated distinction on any of the voiceless consonants that we would be left, uh, stops that we would be left with? Could also do that. I think that would be interesting to see how we would treat them differently. So like a P and then aspirated P, T, aspirated T. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure I could do an aspirated uvular and the glottal wouldn't be aspirated. You did it just naturally the first time. Oh, because I'm an English speaker and I just yeah. naturally do that. Okay. Ha, ha, so in ha. other words, can I do an unaspirated? <laughs> That'll be the question. Um, do you have... Um... Okay, that's clearly not doing it. The thing that switches the the I, I do, but I don't remember the combo. Oh, you should make it the same as the one on mine because it'll make my life easier. This is this is about making your life easier, not about me using my own laptop um, in my own yeah, but way. The, well, but the thing is you're you're not doing it at all at the moment. So there is I, I remember at some point what it is. It's fine. Um, okay. So now we've got a, a solid series of stops with, yeah. um, rather than voicing distinction, we've got, um, an aspirated distinction. Yeah, that's good. Um, so now we're looking at the fricatives and of course the fricatives is the one where there's just always representation in every place of articulation, voiced and voiceless. So, um, right now the only voiced obstruents we have are fricatives. Mm -hmm. What do we think about that? It'd be crazy. And we don't have voiceless fricatives. Um, <laughs> 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 um, I, I would be on board with um, having no voiced fricatives at all. Yeah. Um, the only one that I would say maybe we could play with is maybe an SC since that alveolar placing tends to have something different, but at the same time, I don't really want a Z without all the, you know, like with everything else. 
Um, so that reduces it then to five fricatives in the proto stage of FS and then that velar X, the uvular fancy X and the glottal H. And do you want to keep those? Um, you know, yes and no. Um, there are, um, we could do a number of things here. We could get rid of everything but S and H, and that's simple. We have a strong fricative and a weak fricative. Mm -hmm. We just get rid of F um, because it's, it's actually a rarer sound. Um, we could merge the velar and uvular. I often do that, um, but it is kind of interesting to actually have a distinction there, especially at the proto stage. That kind of makes it fun. Uh, we keep it all. For the proto stage, I kind of want to keep them all. Okay. All right. So the last thing that we need to look at is this approximate column. Um, because Change my mind, let's get rid of the F. <laughs> got it. Now, now I'm good. Okay. So we got four fricatives, um, alveolar, velar, uvular, and glottal. Yeah. So um, we have um, in the approximate column, I always, in the alveolar, I always put, you know, L, the flap, and uh, regular R, because usually one or two of those stay. Um, and so it's, it's easier to have those to start with. Um, what do we want there? Do you want an L and an R? Hmm. Um, I... Interesting. I don't, mm, I'm torn. Like part of me wants to say, no, let's just have like a flap. Mm. That's it. Um, and part of me just wants an L. Mm. Do you have any leanings? I often like um, having just L because then you don't have to worry about the R uh, because R is rarely I mean, it's like your language has a P, it's like, whatever, it's got a P. If your language has an R, it's like, uh, you're gonna have to learn something about it. Let's do L. <clears throat> All right, let's do it. Which means we have, if counted correctly, 17 consonants, 9, 13, 15, 17. Um, and that's a good solid system to start with in the proto forms. Yeah. Um, especially again, like, because David is, mentioned more than once like this isn't where it ends and so we can introduce new sounds through sound changes we can delete some of these through sound changes so we could um end up going in radically different directions depending on uh what we want to do from here um for the vowels to get those decided because i also want to make sure we do get some basic roots put together um for the vowels um I was thinking either just a classic five vowel system or a three vowel system just to make it an easy decision, unless you wanted to also maybe have a schwa included. We could have a four vowel system with e, u, a, a, um, six vowel system with the classic five plus the schwa. Mm -hmm. A four vowel system with schwa is one of my favorites. Um, Ooh, okay. I'm, I'm, Good with four vowel system. I want to actually suggest something a little wild. I want to see if you're on board with this. Oh gosh. Okay, so he is doing something very wild for him. Um, it is a five vowel system with the E and the U and the A as the three, but then he's included the central schwa A and a front mid A. Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a bit of a strange system. Um, you, do, you do often get more distinctions uh, in the front uh, with front vowels uh, than you do with central or back. Um, so it's not like, you know, crazy, but it is a little bit crazy. Man, you must be in a mood today. Ooh. Yeah, I have ideas now. Okay. Um, okay. 
All right. So now um, we need to agree on, because part of what we may need to do, I'm hoping mm -hmm. to create just a handful of, of roots that we can then actually use um, to make a, a tiny, tiny sentence. Um, but we may need to make new roots to make our sentence work uh, the way that we want it to. And so I wanna make sure we're in agreement on what the roots can look like in terms of form. Uh, wait, first of all, where are we gonna list these roots on this document? Um, I was just gonna put them right here. Um, okay. And then I'm gonna end up kind of cleaning up the document um, before sharing it online. Sure. Um, and then we'll go from there because we just don't need this much Let's, information. Let's do, uh, let's, let's brainstorm some roots that are going to be easy. So sleep is a really easy one because it's, um, you know, like someone slept. Yeah. Because it's, um, intransitive and it's mm -hmm. unambiguously intransitive. Mm -hmm. Very easy to do. Um, I'm going to throw give on here with, with the understanding we might not do it. Um, what's a very simple nonviolent transitive root? <laughs> Oh God, this is really sad um, because like everything that immediately came to mind was throw, kick, things yeah. like that. Um, but, oh gosh. And then, and then the other difficulty is like, I want to say like something like eat or drink, but that's not always necessarily. Yeah. It's not always um, transitive. Not always transitive. Right. Um, um, and so um although like okay okay how about grind with the understanding that you normally are grinding seeds and you know yeah i'm holding my little my little mm. grinding thing because to was, crush or grind is usually a, a pretty common word in languages that, that's a good meaning it's just it often gets reduplicated okay <laughs> what do you mean but uh, sticking with that, with the understanding that it's going to be just, how about just pick up? Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. I, I said, what do you mean it often gets reduplicated? Uh, a word like grind or mash or, or, mm -hmm. or crush or something like that. It, it often will be like, you know, there's a root, but at a certain point it just gets reduplicated. And so it's not basic. Interesting. It's in the Leipzig Jakarta list as the top 100 basic roots that don't get borrowed. Oh, sure. No, but it could, but it will often get reduplicated, mm. you know? Mm. And you don't want to reduplicate things. Well, I just, I would love to have the option for it, but you know. <laughs> okay. So Picosos. pick up. Um, These are pretty good. I like, I like those three. Um, we're going to need some nouns. Yeah. So then rock is always easy. Yes. And then we need some sort of agentive um, noun. And so, Person. yeah, just some, I almost said ambiguous, but vague is the word I was going for. Um, sort of, yeah. Yeah, this is a person. Uh, so it's a rock person. Um, and then um, what's a- what's Child. A, what's a plant? Um, and the only reason I say child is we need give, which means we kind of need to, yeah. um, plant, uh, let's do a basic root for, um, oh, we could do tree or we could do, um, we could assume that they're in a place where daisy exists. Daisy, daisy, love it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Um, do we want to hit on pronouns? Like just I singular, you know, like only one pronoun or only one yeah no leave pronouns out okay um and yeah let's just let's just stick with third person for this okay. um so even if we end up needing something like you know agreement it's just third person okay um good i think those are really good places to start um could also pick up like a stick. Um, stick or grass. Mm -hmm. That's a place that you could be. Um, well, I mean, you could be like. Actually, if we want. I would sit in line. Okay. Um, other, did you want places like? Um, could have a hill. 
we could have. Hill is good. Over Hill and Dale. <laughs> no Dales. No Dales. <laughs> okay. So I think that's a, a really good place to start. Okay. And what I would be hoping we would both want to go for is um, to make some routes to go with these that sort of yes. maximize um, not only the sounds, but also like where they occur in the root. Um, and so I say that the protoforms allow for diphthongs. Mm. No? Yes. No. He's deciding whether we're going to allow protoforms with diphthongs. Um, otherwise, like a basic kind of CVC structure. Yeah. There just aren't enough words to really. Um... To really test out where the diphthongs would go. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so like, that's a really good point, especially with a small amount that we're going to be trying to compare. Um, so yeah, let's just do CBC. I don't want to six. We have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's 12. Is that, is that a good amount? I think it's good for now. I feel like what may happen just because we're, I, you know, time constraint with how long this episode will go. Yeah. If we need more, then we can chat with each other and we can update you um, on Discord or, and on Patreon if we add more roots and you're trying to play along at home. Okay. We'll let you know so that way um, you, you'll know what roots we're working with. Okay. So we want to do CBC. Do you want to have everything in the coda? Um. I mean, why not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, or do we want to make it easier in terms of no, just because then we're never going to get all the combinations. Um, oh, I'm, fine. I'm fine with it. I'm fine okay. with it. Okay. okay. For sleep. Super easy, super small. What do you think? Law. <laughs> what? Law. CV. It will show absolutely, there's like nothing that you can do with that. You say go simple. I'm like, let's make it as simple as possible. I was How about thinking like, like this? Oh, there we go. That's perfect. He's got K-A aspirated cup. P. Cup. Yeah, cup. I had to really stop and think about it though, because obviously I want to do aspiration backwards, exactly backwards from that. Cup, like that? Oh, I see what you're because saying. Because in oh, no, English, no, no. the, yeah, you know, cop versus cop. Yeah, there you go. I just had to think about it. Right on. Um, to give, how about, um, I want to say something with like uh, a glottal stop at the end or, and then maybe even a, okay. a glottal fricative in another word. So how about um, like soup with S-U, glottal stop. I love it. Really good. Okay. Uh, pick up. Um, let's, let's trade off. Um, uh, I want to do something that this. Um, oh, I was just thinking about playing with that. Cool. I want to do. Um, Okay, so he's he's doing a two syllable or two syllable. Um, yeah. Clunky. Yeah. Clunky. Woo, woo. Um, for the next one, which is to sit, um, I was actually going to have a because there's something else I kind of want to test out uh, a uvular fricative followed by the high front e and let's uh let's add an m and if is that that's, do we want more than one syllable that's one good syllable? i think that we we should have uh cvc 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 cv cvcv okay but then also cvc but like okay. CV, I mean. Uh, let's add a U at the end. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry, an E, because that's the one vowel we don't have yet. 
Okay. Is to sit. Okay. Why? Um, let's do. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just, as we're thinking through the forms, did we want to have a CVVC? I don't know. I... Okay. Us me. Mm. Do you want? Because we just did me. Well, we just did me. Yeah. Us. Okay, so he's Us. second syllable. He's starting out with a an aspirated T. Us. Us. Oh, that's going to be difficult. Okay. For a rock, can I scroll on my myself Sorry, what, yeah, I'm, yeah, what yeah. I'm dealing with here? Um, all right, we've got aspirate at the beginning. Okay. I'm going to do um, something that ends in T U H or T E H, I like two or T. We've only got one eh. We've only okay. got one U. Okay, so we're I'm gonna keep the U mm -hmm. and I'm going to do um ooh, a schwa up front. Atuh. Atuh. Oh, without aspiration on the T. Gosh, that's a tu. A tu yeah. is rock. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Let's see what needs to be used here. Okay. Uh, oh, that's a lovely word for child. It's oh, person. It person. certainly is, and it's kuya. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no O. Yeah. <laughs> Let's walk that back a little bit. All right. Child. Um, is going to be. Um, it's going to start with an unaspirated T. Um. And then we're going to have an A, X, L, E, Tachle. That's good. That's child. Yeah. Daisy. Oh, you better make it beautiful. I know that you love aspirated uvulars. OK, so I'm going to go. Oh, Haley, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. All right, what's our next word? Stick. Stick. Mm. I'm going to see what we don't have any initial um, nasals yet, I don't think. Mm -mm. So I'm going to start it with a nasal mm -hmm. um, and say it is. In a, or did I, do we have too many A's? I do. I feel like mm -hmm. in I, and then glottal stop. Um, I. E. E. All right, good. That's stick. Okay, grass. We haven't started anything with. Um, and we're doing unaspirated. Interesting. I'm trying to think of it because I know my word's coming up next. Bakis. Bakis. Yep. Cool. And last one. Okay. <laughs> Two. Um, I can't with the email alerts. What's the point of putting things on do not disturb if it apparently still disturbs you? Um, do we have? We only have one ha and only one ha. Let's do, oh. All right, I'm gonna do the uvular followed by ooh. 
we we already have the uvular chat in initial position. If you wanted to try something else. But what wasn't that what you had said we didn't have any of? Well, we only have one of these in one of those. This right. one is only in coda position. This one is only in onset position. Gotcha. Okay, so we'll do the velar h. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> and and why why not? Oh wait, I don't remember how to do the u velar. <laughs> <laughs> So velar and uvular all in one. Okay. And then why not add a ya yeah behind it? Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, that's, that's something all right. Well done. Well done. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay, so we've got um, 12 protoforms that we're going to be evolving. Let's very quickly decide on a basic word order um, so that way we can make sentences. VSO. Um, all right. So we are going to go head initial VSO for the basic. And so, for instance, in the proto form, uh, to say the person sleep slept, whatever verby thing is going to happen there, it's going to be kap kuya. Kap kuya. That was close. That would be the, the proto uh, form of that that we're going to start with. Um, and so, yeah, what, what's going to happen is over the next um, month, David and I are going to, uh, we're, I'm going to duplicate this document, give one to him, one goes to me, and, um, and I will one. post one yeah. on Patreon so that you can have fun too. As I mentioned, like in the live streams, we'll, or, you know, we'll let you know if we ended up having to create a new route. Um, and what, what we came up with. And so that way, if you want to do it too, you can compare what you would do uh, to this language and we can see some of the many variations. I think it'd be really fun if at the end of the month, like a handful of people or everyone did it. Uh, and then we could like share all the results, kind of compile and share <laughs> just, how, just how different this system could look depending on uh, personal choices and in the moment choices, because yeah, you may just be feeling something in particular that day. Um, and so, yeah, that will be where we're headed for our next episode. Love it. Yay. All right. All right. Well, we hope you all are having a wonderful start to February. Um, and we definitely look forward to, um, oh my gosh, it has to be episode 24 because this is year two of doing podcasts. Hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> um, congratulations for making it to our second year of uh, podcastery. <laughs> uh, and we hope you all have a good start to February. Stay grammar. And we will see you soon in, in the live stream. All right. Stay grammar, everybody. Bye. <laughs>